You ever just have one of them days where you're about ready to just give it up working on this old stuff? Today is one of those days. So, I put new compressor, dryer, orifice tube, flushed all the lines out here a while back. The only one I didn't flush out is this line going across here because I didn't know what was in those two little... I mean, I didn't want to mess them up. So, I charged the system up. It didn't... It barely cooled. So, I went back, bought another compressor, another dryer, another orifice tube. I bought that line. Condenser and an EVAP. Because I think the condenser was fine, but the EVAP had a bunch of junk packed in it when I bought this truck because they've been sitting in a field and I'm pretty sure it was packed externally I know the inside I flushed it out good and so it probably wasn't getting quite the airflow it needed so fast forward to this afternoon I put all the new parts on everything compressor dryer orifice tube evap coil condenser coil Pull the vacuum. Everything's new. All the lines are new. The other than this line. And that one was flushed. Put the whole system together. Charge it up. Vacuum it down. Start charging it. Well, it blows this line off. That little snap right there apparently wasn't latched all the way. It blew it off. Well, little did I know, when it blew off, it shot the orifice tube out. And I have yet to find it. So, I fire it, and I didn't know it. I put it all back together. I crank it up. I start charging it. It's not cooling at all. Compressor's running. It's not making any funny noises. It's just not cooling at all. So, I'm like, oh, great. I got a bad compressor. So, I'm like, you know what? I need air. I need cold air. Let's just get the other compressor I had, put it back on here, because I wasn't 100% sure that compressor was bad anyways. It was probably still good. I put that compressor on, and for some reason I thought, let me check in there, see what shape that orifice tube is in. And when I looked down in there, it wasn't there. And I'm like, there's no way it would have packed it down in there because the line is crimped right there, so it can't get past that crimp. Well, that's when I realized, oh, when the line blew off, it blew the orifice tube out. So I tried to find the one that, was, that blew out. I could never find it. Luckily, I still had the old evap coil, so I robbed it out of it. I managed to get it out, cleaned it up, put it back in there the right way, made sure this was latched, and now I'm pulling a vacuum again. And you can see we're just barely at like 22... 24 psi but see how fast it's leaking down it did this earlier and after I left it on long enough it finally just pulled the vacuum so we're gonna do the same thing it's only been running about 10 minutes 8 or 10 minutes so it just may need to get vacuumed some more I've already double checked all the lines made sure they were tight once this gets vacuumed down, we're going to put the two cans I got left in it, and it takes two and a half, and hopefully it'll start cooling. And if it does, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll go get another can and put another half a can in it, and that's what the system takes, and it should be fine. But if the compressor is trashed, then I'll go get this one. I don't know. That one may still be good now. That's the problem you run into on this stuff. You now, put parts on. Oh, no. Oh, that ain't it. Nope. Well, now let's do this. Oh, well, now I missed that part. And it's worse when you're in a big hurry to get this stuff done because you got a very short time frame to get things accomplished. And it's hotter than the hinges of hell around here. And I've got to have AC in this truck. It's bad enough I'm out working in the heat but it'd be nice to at least step into a truck that's cool or better yet cold so while that's doing its thing 
Got two other deals. And I'm just recording this on my phone because all my GoPro batteries are dead. <clears throat> the little Dixie chopper works. When I got it, it had been sitting outside for two years. Well, you see that crack in the muffler? And you see how the exhaust tubes are lower than the crack? Well, the engine was stuck. And I'm like, oh, this isn't good. So I pulled the spark plugs out, had the air cleaner and everything off of it. I started spraying lube, penetrating lube in the carburetor. I filled both cylinders up as much as I could get in them. And then I started rocking it and it came loose pretty, pretty easily. So luckily there must not have been much, and I didn't even pump any water out when I turned it over. Just a little bit of oil I'd put in them. But apparently it was enough condensation in there to make it stick just a little bit. So after doing all that, cleaning that out, I figured out what, where the water came in. Because obviously it didn't come in through the air cleaner. It was sitting like this. Um, pulled the carburetor off, got the bowl off, cleaned it up. Made sure the little solenoid was working because it was stuck. And got one tank cleaned out i'm running off of one side the other one is completely full of really bad old gas so i've got to get that drained out and put a new fuel filter and probably some new fuel line on it but it runs it drives it mows but i think the bearing on the pto clutch is going out let's see if it'll start and i'm probably going to need a starter <clears throat> hear that that dry bearing but like I said it does now I mowed with it and the deck belt is a little worn so I'm probably gonna get a, I've already ordered a new deck belt and I got to get a drive belt and then this little case, this little reservoir is cracked. And I've noticed the oil in there does have, it is a little milky. So I've got to get one of them. I don't know where I'm going to get it. I looked on eBay. They don't have them. So I may have to get one off of either Amazon or just go to find a Dixie Chopper dealer, which I don't think they make them anymore. I think they're under another name now. But I definitely need that. Then I need to flush all the hydraulics and get that water out. But other than that, I mean, and the, the belt being wore, so what will happen, it'll start slipping a little if you get into some of this tall grass like what I have out here. You can see where I mowed that, but it took a lot of tries going back and forth. So that's pretty much done other than just little maintenance stuff I got to do, but at least it runs and drives. Then on to the Chevy. This thing, oh my gosh. Where do I begin? This thing also came from the same guy that the mower came from. It sat for two years or so and it wouldn't start. A friend of mine got it, wanted me to buy it or fix it and sell it and get it running. So he had one key. I asked him if it had a key fob or anything like that. He said, no, they only had one key they found. So I went on and started watching some videos of different things. Let me go get the key to it. Watch different videos of how to get by the theft deterrent system because the battery had been dead for so long that that theft deterrent system was armed. So when you went to go to start, it showed the little picture of the truck with the lock on it. And there was a sequence you had to do that involved uh, turning the key on, try to start it, leave it in the run position for 10 minutes, then turn it off, wait 10 seconds, turn it back on, and you had to do that, I think, three times in a row to get it to where it would start. Well, I did this sequence over and over and over again. I had 
my truck pulled up beside it with jumper cables on it making sure the battery didn't go down while i was doing all this and i mean it was just hush up hush hush and it was just one thing after another i could not ever now i did get the little truck symbol and the lock to go off but then it still wouldn't start and of course as soon as you went to the start position it came back on again so i think i was getting ready to have have it where it would work and basically you're having to relearn the key so just for the heck of it today i thought i'm gonna look around see if there is a key in the truck anywhere so i looked in the head the visors i looked in this nasty console there's the key that was sent with the truck and apparently it was never programmed and lo and behold, under the driver's seat, look what I found. First thing I did was, and it worked. Now the battery may be weak, but nope. Starts right up every time. I took it for a drive earlier and uh, got ice cold air conditioning. Now the, all four tires are low. Because like I said, this thing's been sitting. But it drives good. The cruise control works. The, the manual shift on here works. And like I said, the AC works. It's nice and cold, unlike my Ford. And uh, yeah, right now it just needs a real good cleaning. And then it's going to be for sale. Because this thing stinks inside. I had to clean the gauges up a little with some of them disinfecting wipes just so I could see what was happening with the gauges but if I hadn't have found these I was going to end up having to have this thing towed to the dealership so that they could get this key relearned and then I'd probably have to buy a key fob and have that programmed so now I can sell the truck which I'm not going to sell it until see how nasty the door panels are and guys, this, you can't even smell the smell that's in this truck. It is bad. I mean, it'll it'll gag you. The steering wheel's all gooey. Mm. I sat in it yesterday doing this whole sequence for hours and hours also. And when I left, I went to another job. And when I came, when I, while I was at the other job, I could actually smell this truck. But pretty dang clean it's straight it's a long bed four door four wheel drive long bed it's got the 60 in it 4l80 six speed transmission and it's got a fairly heavy heavier duty suspension than what i had in my old red silverado it's got a decent aluminum toolbox but the problem is you see that the whole bottom's coming out of it. Yeah, my hand's filthy. I've been working on all kinds of stuff. So, with that being said, get the detailer over, I can sell that truck. I need to get the belts in for the Dixie Chopper, get them on it. And then I've got, a, and I looked up, I found that PTO clutch, the electric clutch. It's like 350 bucks. So, I may look around, see, that was just like the first one that popped up. I may look around, see if I can find one of them. I've got to get uh, that crack welded up. And then I broke this myself. I was picking this thing up by the ROPS with my skid steer. And I didn't know it didn't have the pin in that side. It only had this one in. So when it got up so far, it basically fell and just ripped that eye right out. So I need to get that knocked back down, re-weld it because i would like to put the rops back on it where i can fold it down or put it up if i need it and mainly because i'd like to put a canopy on it of some sort for shade and then this setup is for a bagging system it's got this piece that goes on here you've seen it in one of the other videos it's got like a 45 degree gearbox and it goes underneath and there's uh that bottom pulley right there comes over and it drives it and it just has a big mechanical engage and disengage lever and it runs a blower that attaches to the deck that sucks it up mulches it and then it puts it into these two bags that are on here 
I've got all of it, but I've only got one tube. I don't know. I don't know if it's a tube that comes off of that to here or from here to the bags. And it may not even be the right one, period, because it's an awful big flex tube. But either way, I've only got one, so I'm still missing one of the, one of the tubes. So I may get online and see if I can find them because that'll be great around here for picking up stickers and stuff so they'll quit growing. And just so you don't have big wind rows of grass laying around. And then I got to get that on the lift and see what's up with the linkage it won't go in reverse period the shifter lever won't go back so i need to get the cables off and see if i can mechanically move them and if i can then it's just going to be a cable that's bad and this is going to be even just as much fun routing that thing all under here through it and back up and then getting it adjusted right that may be a kubota thing i may just let her take that but i may just see if i can pinpoint it and find out if it is the cables or the transmission which if it's a transmission she's probably just gonna have to sell that thing because i want to say the transmission for them that hydrostat is like six or seven or eight thousand dollars so she bought it used off of the marketplace several years ago and it still goes in forward gears fine so i would assume that the hydrostat's still good let's see what this thing is down to now and it's still yeah still leaking off but it's real slow that's why i don't like these older systems that have these flare nuts i like the ones on the newer trucks that just have a you put an o-ring and you bolt it together boom done and then like this little setup down here where that orifice tube is it just has two o-rings on the male side to slide down in there and that's got one of them little springs like a fuel line that locks it on Ugh. so i'm really really hoping i can get this ac going i've got to have it it is unbearable i thought yeah it ain't no big deal i got wing windows on this truck yeah they don't help they help to an extent but it's still just like a hair dryer blowing on you so we're going to let this thing continue to vacuum down. I'll pump them cans of Freon in it. We'll see if it's going to start cooling. Hope the heck it does. And if it does, I'll pick up some more Freon and just dump it in at a later time. But two cans, and it needs two and a half. So two cans should, it should cool. But you never know. This system has been giving me fits. Hush up, Oliver. So... That being said, guys, we're going to call it a day, and hopefully soon we can get on that loader when I get all the other projects done. I got to put an ignition switch in it and hook up the air cleaner, hook up the, the basically the brake booster for the brakes, and then it's just a major service. All the fluids and filters, and that thing's ready to put to work. The loader bucket creeps down because it does have... A, a hose for that it's leaking but the loader arms themselves they're still sitting up that was from two or three days ago so anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video sorry about all the rambling and showing you all the different stuff i got going on but that's just how it goes around here at the rusted acre so if y'all haven't already subscribe to my channel hit that notification button so you can be notified when i upload new videos and like share comment just do what you got to do we will see y'all in the next one later